I remember years ago, I was in Bible college in East Tennessee, and I was working at a restaurant. And there was this woman that I worked with, and she was a she was a nice person, decent person. And she was not an old woman, but she was she was old enough to be my mother. And we worked together, and uh, you know, got along just fine. And I remember one day she got a phone call and abruptly left work. It was um, really it was unlike her. It was bizarre. And I asked a few people, and they told me what had happened. She got a phone call that her mother had passed away, and we we prayed for her. I was so sad to hear that. But this woman was not a church-going woman. She was, I didn't think she was saved. And I tried to witness to her before, and just, she wasn't interested. Hard heart, you know. And about two weeks later, she came back to work. And me being the Bible college student that was there, if, if ever on the rare occasion somebody wanted to talk about church, I was somehow pulled into that conversation. And when she came back, I asked her how the funeral went. I, I said, you know, everything was okay. We've been praying for you and try to be real kind with her. And uh, she just came out and started talking real openly about her mother and, and religion, really. And that was unlike her. She never did want to talk about that. And she said this to me. She said, I stood there over my, over my mother's body. And she said, a, th- a crazy thought went through my mind. Where is my mother? Where is she? Is she in heaven? Well, how do you get to heaven? And so she went to the Lutheran pastor. There was a modernist Lutheran pastor that was preaching that funeral that day. And um, she went to him and says, you know, uh, where's my mom? Where's my mom? And... They start talking about Jesus. And the Lutheran pastor said this, said, uh, well, did your mother believe in Jesus? And she said, well, I didn't know what he meant by that. So I asked him, I said, you know, what do you mean, like believe in the tooth fairy or believe in Santa Claus? And the modernistic pastor said, well, did she, be- did she believe in Jesus? And she said, yes, I suppose so. And that modernistic Lutheran pastor said, well, if she believed in Jesus, then I wouldn't worry about him. And she said, well, what about me? That Lutheran pastor looked at her and says, well, do you believe in Jesus? And she said, yeah, I mean, who doesn't? And that pastor told her, well, then you should be okay too. And when she told me that, i got to be honest, my heart sank. I was mad. I was troubled by that statement. Because I I thought to myself, you know, this is something that's so important and such a big deal. And the way he put it and the way he dealt with that was so reckless and vague that it was almost cruel the way that guy said that to that woman. I just believe in Jesus. Ha, you're fine. Ha, just believe in Jesus. Yeah, we're okay. And I thought to myself, that is so anti-God and anti-Bible. There's a verse in the book of James that says, you believe in God, you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now think of chapters like Matthew 7, where the Bible says, Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and thy name cast out devils, and thy name done many wonderful works in that day? And, and, and in that day, Jesus will look at them and say, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. So there's people that believe in the Lord, but they're not going to heaven because they've never truly been born again. And guys, when it comes to the gospel, being saved, That's something that's so important that it deserves clarity. And anybody who's reckless with the gospel is a cruel human being. You're cruel to people. Because this is something that matters. I care about this because I care about the Lord. I care about souls. 
And I don't want anybody to die and go to hell. And what that pastor did to that family that day, just say, I just believe in Jesus. <laughs> You're okay. I just believe in Jesus. You're fine. You're fine. And didn't talk about the cross. Didn't talk about being born again. Didn't talk about receiving Christ. There's a difference between believing in Christ and receiving Christ as Savior and being born again. Total difference. Like, like galaxies of difference between those two things. And so I thought these matters are so important and so weighty that anybody who would just play fast and loose with terminology, just spew out a few cliches, they're not a friend of the gospel. They're the worst enemy of the gospel. I want to say that again because I want you to hear me. They're not the friend of the gospel. They are the worst enemy to the gospel. And recently, the Roberts family, the Duck Dynasty people that, you know, we all laugh at and the cut up at their Southern humor and such, uh, they did a podcast where they talked about an emissary from Rome in his whole, you know, outfit, Roman Catholic outfit, came to Phil Robertson's house. Do you have time to meet with uh, uh, an emissary, I guess you could call him, uh, from Pope Francis over in Italy? I thought an <laughs> the emissary. Current, the current Pope? The current Pope. And Phil kind of just talked to him and said, you know, the death, burial, and resurrection, do you believe that? And the man said, yes, I, I, we may be, maybe we word a little bit different, but I do believe that. He, after I showed him, make sure you do this. And he said, I do not disagree with anything you're saying, Mr. Robinson. It is glad that you stand on that message there. He said, we say the same thing, but I may be using some different wordage. <laughs> Anybody who knows anything about Roman Catholicism can uh, can generally contest that. It's not the same religion. It's really not even the same. What they believe is so outside the bounds of the Bible, I don't even know how people call it Christianity. And there is a difference between being Catholic and being Christian. But this, this emissary came to Phil Roberts' house, and they, they put out in the podcast how that you know, as long as you just believe in Jesus, then I'm for you. I'm on your side. You're not our. You're not my enemy. You believe in Jesus too. And when I saw that, I thought to myself, "This is just like that Lutheran pastor that's saying, just believe in Jesus.' Ah, it. You know, you're fine. Chasing a rabbit. To, I, I was. I was not attempting to, to, get into semantics. Right. About all Which the, is my point. Look, we look, you know, look I, I love the man for taking Jesus to the world. Yeah. I love Thank the Pope you. for sending him. That's right. Uh they're on our side. They're not against mm -hmm. us. They're for us. And those who know the Bible know it's not that simple. I I wish it was. I wish it was. But it's not. And here's the thing that I that troubles me about the Roberts family is the things that were said on that podcast, you know, I I like those guys. I like them. I like them. I I you know their 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 attitudes and disposition I I do enjoy, but the position to me is frightening, especially when you consider the implications on young people that that will have. When you just boil it down to, if you believe in Jesus, you're okay with me. I was trying to let him know that we all together, we meaning the people who have bowed their knee to Jesus, the Son of God, right. and what he did, what he's now doing, and what he will do. I'm all in with anybody who goes forth with the yeah, message of me the too. cross and the resurrection. That sets a precedent that's dangerous. Because, okay, let's just say that, hey, everybody who just believes in Jesus, you're fine. You're fine. I, I, I'll, I'll fellowship with you. I'll work with you. I'll... I'll I'll pray with you. We'll we'll I'll come preach for you, and you come preach for me. If you believe in Jesus, that's fine. Well, you know, do you know who's in that circle? Do you have any idea who that puts you in a circle with? That puts you in the circle with the Mormons. You know, the the religion that says that uh, black people are cursed because you know they stood with Lucifer, Lucifer in the preexistence, and they stood against God, and so God cursed their skin. That that's. You're standing in the circle with Mormons because, you know, they believe in Jesus too. 
Matter of fact, they believe in the virgin birth. They believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So you're going to hold hands with Mormons? Matter of fact, the Jehovah's Witnesses believe that too. You're just going to act like Jehovah's Witnesses are all of a sudden okay? And I'll give you, I'll give you another one. You believe in Jesus? You're okay with me? That, 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 that kind of really can put you in the same circle with the Muslims. You say, well, that's not what they intended to mean. That's not what they meant. Well, then they need to brush up on their vocabulary because that's reckless talk. That's reckless to say that. Because it's somewhere, somehow, somebody is enamored with these people, and they're the cool duck dynasty people. They're, they are the ones who are, man, this is, these people are awesome. They're like Republican Trump supporters, and they're like Christians, and they like love God, man. And like, you know, they go to the, the, uh, the Passion Conference in Atlanta every year, and, you know, Sadie's up there preaching and teaching, and she's like so rad and cool. And, oh, man, these people are so funny. They're rednecks with their duck calls, and they got the shotguns, and they're, and they, you know, they got the store down there in Louisiana. They're so funny. I love these guys. And then they get, a, and then these people that, so many folks in the Bible Belt of America, where I grew up, are just so excited about these people and put a lot of, they, they really, they've got a ton of influence. And then they hear Phil Roberts get up and say that the Pope's not my enemy. It's, Look, I, I love the man for taking Jesus to the world. Yeah. I love the you. Pope for sending him. That's right. Uh, they're on our side. They're not against mm -hmm. us. They're for us. If you believe in Jesus, I'm for you. The implications of that are frightening because Romanism is not Bible Christianity. Now listen, we're, we've, gone, we've gone beyond, we've gone beyond talking about preferences here. This is beyond culottes and contemporary music and casting crowns, okay? We've gone beyond that. We are talking about heaven and hell here. We are talking about heaven and hell. People get on me all the time and say, why don't you just preach the gospel? I am preaching the gospel. You just, you just don't get it. Guys, I want you to know that Roman Catholicism is not Christianity. This pope, especially this one now, is a globalist who is a communist who is as far left as you could ever imagine. His stances on the, the, uh, the, the social issues of the day are all to the left, way to the left, including the LGBT and all that stuff. All of that's to the left. He's way to the left on all that. It's troubling. And for someone with the influence of Phil Roberts to come out and say he's fine by me. So I appreciate anybody taking yeah. going forth. So I think the Pope did a good deal. Yeah. He appointed some guys to that, go forth. Did you, say, did you think that I fear for what he's projected into the minds of young people? And I, I know, I know when I put out a video like this and I, and I, I share with you my concerns, I know I, I probably, I, I probably am the lone voice in the wilderness on this. And that's okay. I'll say it. Because somebody has to. Phil Robertson, in his endorsement of Roman Catholicism and his endorsement of the Pope, is at best criminally negligent, reckless at best. That was not the emissary that, that the Pope Francis sent out. Right. This man was a godly man. Yep. He believed in Jesus. Yep. And he came by and I gave him some encouraging words. Terrible, terrible thing to do. And guys, I want to tell you real quick that Romanism 
although it claims that we're just like you guys. Come come be with us. There's no reason. The Reformation should have never happened. You people went out. It's time for you guys to come back home. Guys, that is that is not what you need to do. When I first got into this, I thought, you know, let's just talk about contemporary Christian music and, and how that's bad and, and all that stuff. But I found out this rabbit hole goes a whole lot deeper than that. There is a entity in Re- Revelation chapter 17 the Bible calls it the great whore. I do believe that to be the one world religion. And that one world religion will be headed up, I believe, by the Roman Catholic Church. There's a city that sits on seven hills. There's scarlet and purple linen. It, it, it almost describes eerily, eerily to the T, Romanism. I fear for that. And for somebody to look at this religion called popery and say that, well, if he believes in Jesus, he's fine by me, and to make it that broad, that is criminal. That's cruel to say that. Cruel. Anyone <laughs> with a job, as he stated it, to carry the message of Jesus to the world, Yep, I'm in. Yep. I'm yep. all in. I don't care what, what you call yeah, yourself. I agree. Yeah. And I keep thinking about that story of that woman with that Lutheran pastor, and the Lutheran pastor just says, hey, you, you believe in Jesus? You're, if you just believe in Jesus, you're fine. Hey, your mother's fine. You believe in Jesus. And you know that woman, that, that, that confirmed that woman in her sin. Because she never, I never could talk to her about religion again. Because she just kept saying, I believe in Jesus. But she had no evidence of being converted. There's going to come a day where these preachers are going to give an account. I'm a preacher. I know one day I'll give an account. And if it comes down to being the the only guy in the world who looks at this and says, that's not good, and I face the wrath of the online comments, the brethren, saying, you're being too narrow-minded, you're too being too judgmental. I'm willing to do that because I, I know that was horrible. And I know the defense will be, well, you're just splitting hairs. No, not, not when it comes to that. Not when it comes to, to, to Roman Catholicism. I'm not splitting hairs, sir. Don't you dare misrepresent me like that. This is a big deal. I mean, if I was sitting there saying that they need to cut their hair, okay, maybe you could say that. But when I'm talking about a religion that worships a woman, calls her the mother of God, and holds her up in a divinity status, it's dangerous. Dangerous. I'm bothered by it. And so I hope that they, I hope that they would reconsider I wish I could find some way to talk to them. I would beg them to reconsider. But these, let me tell you just real fast. I want to use the measure of influence, the sliver of influence that I have in the world and maybe even on the Internet to say that that was a horrible, horribly, horribly heretical thing that they said. The Pope is not your friend. And just saying... Ah, if you believe in Jesus, you're okay with me. That's frighteningly dangerous. It's, Look, I, I love the man for taking Jesus to the world. Yeah, I love the Pope you. for sending him. That's right. Uh, they're on our side. They're not against mm-hmm. us. They're for us. Don't go for that. That's wrong. It should not have been said. And I would implore you, please, if you're a young person watching this or some church person out there, do not... Do not pretend for one second that that system of religion is just like you, maybe just uses a little bit different terminology, you know, semantics. Chasing a rabbit. To, I, I, was, I was not attempting to, to get into semantics right. about all Which the, is my point. Look, we, look, you know. Don't you believe that for a second? Because it's not so. That thing is so far removed from Bible Christianity, it's as far as the East is to the West.
and I love you enough to tell you. So, let come what may. This is dangerous, what was said. And I want to warn you about it. Folks, if you haven't seen Third Adam 1 or 2, please go see those. We will make those available on our channel. They, they're, they're up, and once you go see those. Guys, this is not some cheap risk. This isn't like putting $100 in Bitcoin, and if, if it works out great. If not, ha, I'm just out 100 bucks. This is heaven and hell. This is about your soul. I would hate to know that I endorsed something that was so heretical and my children embraced it and their children embraced it. The next thing you know, I destroyed the next generation because of my reckless, reckless theological words and my reckless theological positions. This isn't, this isn't Apollos who just needs to learn more perfectly the way of the Lord. This is Baal. And Baal's not just a little bit off. Baal is straight out of the pits of hell. I hope you consider these thoughts. God bless you, friend. We love you. And subscribe to our channel. To get that point across to him, said, let, let, let's all get together here, right. whether it be Carson, I don't know what group he's with. Seventh day. Seventh day Adventist. Then you have the Catholics. You're, what are you going to do? Hate them? I mean, they believe in Jesus, so I don't mind sitting down with anybody 